In this video, we will explore the top 20 technical support interview questions and answers that can help candidates prepare effectively. These questions cover a range of topics relevant to technical support roles, ensuring a thorough understanding of key concepts. Whether you are a seasoned professional or new to the field, these insights will enhance your interview readiness. By reviewing these questions, you can gain confidence and improve your communication skills for a successful interview experience. 1. What do you understand about the role of a technical support engineer? A technical support engineer acts as a bridge between technology and the end user. Their primary responsibility is to assist customers in resolving technical issues they encounter with products or services. This role involves diagnosing problems, providing solutions, and ensuring customer satisfaction. Technical support engineers must possess strong communication skills to explain complex concepts simply and clearly. They often work with various tools and technologies to troubleshoot issues effectively. Additionally, they may document problems and solutions for future reference and contribute to product improvement by providing feedback based on customer interactions. Continuous learning is essential to stay updated with the latest technologies and trends. 2. Name some of the latest computer processors. The latest computer processors include the Intel Core i91390OK, which boasts 24 cores and is designed for high-performance gaming and content creation. AMD's Ryzen 97950X3D is another standout, featuring 3DV cache technology that enhances gaming performance. Apple's M2 chip is noteworthy as well, providing impressive power efficiency and performance for Mac devices. Additionally, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is notable for mobile devices, improving AI capabilities and graphics processing. These advancements showcase the industry's focus on multi-core designs, energy efficiency, and performance enhancements tailored for diverse computing needs. 3. What does a sign-in device manager indicate? The sign-in device manager indicates that the operating system has detected a device that is not functioning properly or is not recognized. This situation often arises when the necessary drivers for the device are either missing, outdated, or incompatible. It can also signify that the device is not connected correctly or is experiencing hardware issues. If the problem persists, further investigation into the device's compatibility with the operating system may be required. 4. How would you handle a customer who is unable to get a proper print copy from a brand new printer? When addressing a customer struggling with a brand new printer, I would begin by empathizing with their frustration, acknowledging their concern. I would then guide them through a series of troubleshooting steps. First, I would check if the printer is properly connected to the power supply and the computer. Next, I would ensure the correct printer is set as the default in the system settings. Checking for any error messages or blinking lights on the printer could provide insight into the issue. I would also verify that the printer has sufficient paper and ink or toner. If necessary, I would walk them through reinstalling the printer drivers or suggest contacting the manufacturer for warranty support if the issue persists. 5. How do you keep yourself updated with current technology? Staying updated with current technology is crucial in the ever-evolving field of IT. I regularly follow reputable tech news websites, such as TechCrunch, Ars Technica, and Wired, which provide insights into the latest trends and innovations. Participating in online forums and communities like Reddit and Stack Overflow allows me to engage with industry professionals and enthusiasts to share knowledge and experiences. Additionally, I enroll in online courses and webinars to deepen my expertise in emerging technologies. Attending industry conferences and networking events also enhances my understanding of market developments and offers opportunities for hands-on learning and collaboration. 6. What are the tools that will help you in identifying and solving problems? When troubleshooting technical issues, several essential tools can assist in identifying and resolving problems effectively. Diagnostic software is crucial, as it can analyze system performance and detect errors. Tools like remote desktop applications enable technicians to access users' systems directly, facilitating quicker resolutions. Network monitoring tools help track connectivity and bandwidth issues, while ticketing systems organize customer queries and track progress. Knowledge bases provide valuable resources for common problems and solutions. Finally, Communication tools are vital for keeping customers informed throughout the troubleshooting process, ensuring clarity and understanding. 7. 
What is the expected duration of an average call when dealing with customers? The expected duration of an average call when dealing with customers typically ranges from 5 to 15 minutes. However, this can vary based on the complexity of the issue being addressed. Simpler inquiries, such as password resets or basic troubleshooting, may be resolved within a shorter time frame. In contrast, more complex technical problems may require extended discussions to fully understand the customer's concerns and provide a satisfactory resolution. It's essential to balance efficiency with thoroughness, ensuring the customer feels heard and supported while also managing call time effectively. Adapting to the customer's needs can lead to better service quality and customer satisfaction. 8. Why is the 8085 processor called an 8-bit processor? The 8085 processor is termed an 8-bit processor because it processes data in 8-bit chunks, meaning it can handle 8 bits of information simultaneously. This characteristic defines its data bus width, which is 8 bits wide, allowing it to read and write 8 bits of data from memory or input-output devices at once. The 8085's architecture is designed to operate with 8-bit data types, making it suitable for tasks requiring byte-level data manipulation. This design influences the types of instructions it can execute, as all operations are performed on 8-bit data, effectively determining its processing capabilities and efficiency in managing simpler applications compared to modern processors with wider data bus architectures. 9. What is a stack, and can ROM be used as a stack? A stack is a data structure that operates on a last-in, first-out, LIFO, principle, meaning the last item added is the first one to be removed. It is commonly used in programming for function calls, memory management, and algorithm implementation. Each stack operation consists of two primary actions, push, adding an item, and pop, removing an item. Regarding the use of ROM as a stack, it is generally not suitable. ROM, read-only memory, is designed for permanent storage of data that does not change during operation. Since stacks require dynamic memory allocation for adding or removing items, using ROM, which does not allow modification of its contents, is impractical for stack operations. Instead, RAM, random access memory, is used for stacks due to its ability to quickly read and write data. 10. Explain what an interrupt is. An interrupt is a signal that temporarily halts the execution of a program or process, allowing the system to respond to events that require immediate attention. When an interrupt occurs, the current state of the program is saved, and control is transferred to an interrupt handler, which is a special routine designed to address the specific event. Once the handler completes its task, the system can resume the interrupted program from where it left off. Interrupts can be generated by hardware, like I.O. devices, or software, such as system calls, enabling efficient multitasking and resource management within computing environments. This mechanism is crucial for responsive and efficient system performance. 11. What are the qualities that a good technical support employee must possess? A good technical support employee should possess strong communication skills, both verbal and written, to effectively convey technical information to clients. Patience is essential, as technical issues can be frustrating for users. Problem-solving skills are crucial, enabling the employee to diagnose and resolve issues efficiently. Empathy helps in understanding customer frustrations, allowing for better service. In addition, a solid understanding of technology and the ability to learn new systems quickly are vital. Lastly, adaptability is important, as technology evolves rapidly, requiring employees to stay current and adjust their knowledge accordingly. 12. What are the duties of a technical support employee? A technical support employee is responsible for assisting customers with technical issues related to products or services. This includes diagnosing problems, providing solutions, and guiding users through troubleshooting steps. They must effectively communicate both technical details and user-friendly instructions. Additionally, they document customer interactions, maintain detailed records of issues and resolutions, and escalate complex problems to higher-level support when necessary. Staying updated with product knowledge and industry trends is essential. A technical support employee also collaborates with other teams to improve product performance and customer satisfaction. Regular training is key to maintaining their expertise. 13. Why should we hire you? I possess a strong blend of technical expertise and exceptional communication skills that allows me to effectively assist customers with their issues. 
My experience in troubleshooting various hardware and software problems has equipped me with the ability to identify solutions quickly. I am committed to continuous learning and staying updated with the latest technologies, which enables me to provide informed support. Additionally, my patience and empathy help me connect with customers, ensuring they feel valued and understood. I thrive in fast-paced environments and am dedicated to delivering high-quality service, making me a great fit for your team. 14. Have you learned from your mistakes in your career as an IT expert? Absolutely. Throughout my career in IT, I've encountered various challenges that have taught me invaluable lessons. For instance, early on, I misconfigured a network setting that caused significant downtime for a client. This experience was humbling and highlighted the importance of thorough testing and verification before implementing changes. I learned to approach problems with a mindset of continuous improvement, always reflecting on what could have been done differently. Each mistake has reinforced my commitment to proactive communication and meticulous planning, ensuring that I not only correct the error but also prevent similar issues in the future. Learning from mistakes has become an essential part of my professional growth. 15. How do you handle working with difficult team members on a project? Dealing with difficult team members requires a balanced approach. First, I focus on open communication. I try to understand their perspective and the reasons behind their behavior. Active listening is key. It fosters an environment where everyone feels heard. If conflicts arise, I address them directly but respectfully, aiming for a constructive outcome. It's essential to remain calm and composed, avoiding personal attacks. I often seek common ground and emphasize shared goals to unite the team. If necessary, I involve a mediator, such as a supervisor, to ensure a resolution. The aim is to maintain a collaborative atmosphere that encourages productivity and mutual respect. 16. What is your favorite piece of technology, and why? One of my favorite pieces of technology is the smartphone. It has transformed the way we communicate, access information, and manage our daily lives. The convenience of having a powerful computer in my pocket allows me to stay connected with friends and family, check emails, and navigate unfamiliar places with ease. Additionally, smartphones have revolutionized photography and video, enabling anyone to capture high-quality images and share experiences instantly. The vast array of apps available enhances productivity, entertainment, and learning, making it an indispensable tool in both personal and professional settings. Its ability to evolve through software updates keeps it relevant and useful over time. 17. Where do you get your tech news? Staying informed about technology is essential for a technical support engineer. I primarily rely on reputable technology news websites such as TechCrunch, Ars Technica, and CNET for updates on the latest trends and product launches. I also follow influential technology blogs and podcasts which provide insights and discussions on emerging technologies and industry developments. Social media platforms, like Twitter and LinkedIn, are valuable for real-time updates and networking with industry professionals. Additionally, I participate in online forums and communities, such as Reddit and Stack Overflow, where peers share experiences and insights about current tech issues and solutions. This diversified approach helps me stay current in the fast-paced tech landscape. 18. Do you work best alone or as part of a team? In my experience, I thrive in both environments, depending on the task at hand. Working alone allows me to focus deeply on problem-solving and dive into complex tasks without distractions. However, collaboration often leads to better outcomes, as sharing ideas and perspectives can enhance creativity and efficiency. In team settings, I appreciate the diversity of skills and knowledge that each member brings, which can lead to more effective solutions, especially in technical support roles where complex problems often require collective insights. Ultimately, my adaptability enables me to switch between both modes effectively, ensuring that I contribute positively to either scenario. 19. What are the most important skills for someone working in this role? A technical support engineer should possess a blend of technical and interpersonal skills. Strong problem-solving abilities are crucial, enabling the engineer to diagnose and resolve issues efficiently. Excellent communication skills are necessary to explain complex concepts clearly to clients who may not be technically savvy. Patience and empathy are also important, as support engineers frequently interact with frustrated users. Familiarity with various operating systems, software applications, and hardware components is essential. 
Additionally, strong organizational skills help in managing multiple tasks effectively. Continuous learning and adaptability are vital in keeping up with rapid technological advancements. 20. How do you prioritize your tasks when dealing with multiple issues at the same time? When faced with multiple issues, I first assess the urgency and impact of each problem. I prioritize critical tasks that affect business operations or customer satisfaction. Next, I categorize issues based on their complexity and the time required for resolution. Using a task management tool, I create a list, focusing on high-priority items while allocating time for less urgent matters. Effective communication with the team is vital, so I ensure everyone is aware of priorities. I also remain flexible, adjusting my focus as new issues arise or as higher priority tasks need immediate attention. Regularly reviewing my progress helps maintain efficiency. In this video, we've explored the top 20 technical support interview questions and answers, equipping you with the knowledge you need to shine in your next interview. Remember, preparation is key, and understanding these questions can greatly enhance your confidence and performance. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more valuable content. Your support helps us create more resources to assist you in your career journey. Thank you for watching.